So hello mga ka-homeschool and welcome to the month of June. Grabe, ang bilis. It's already half of the year. Really time flies. When you look at our children, no, they have really grown up and now are teens and we will tell ourselves, grabe, bakit nga ba ang bilis ng panahon? Ang baby ko ay malaki na. And I saw the picture of our guest, no, posted by her mom. The first photo ito was taken when she was six years old i guess no and the other one is the current photo so the baby is now a lady and i'm glad that she said yes to this interview she is a graduating 12th grader and to celebrate her graduation um her mom mentioned that she wanted to give back to the homeschool community who helped her so much and i want to honor her because of this reason she was given a scholarship mind you not one not two but in three u.s schools she also passed the De La Salle University, University of Santo Tomas, and Ateneo Pre-Med, and was even invited to join the Dallas Conservatory of Dance because she's a ballerina. She became one of the youngest apprentices of Philippine Ballet Theater at 15 years old. She is a 17-year-old and was homeschooled for most of her high school years. So let's welcome Maka Homeschool, Therese Riego. Hi, Therese. Hi, <laughs> Grabe, no? Thank you for saying yes to this interview. I really appreciate because I appreciate it because I know a lot of parents and teens as well would like to know how you were able to do those things, no? Yeah, thank you so much for, for having me. I really appreciate it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, ever since you were six years old, your dream is to, to become a doctor, is that right? Uh, yes, po. <laughs> and also to be a dancer because I started dancing around six years old also so. so a dancing doctor a ballerina doctor <laughs> and i read in one of your mom's posts that on your birthdays you always ask for books on the human body instead of toys uh yes but i don't know <laughs> i've never really like played with dolls that much like i have some but yeah i was more interested in reading books i guess when i was young so Okay, so aside from being interested in the human, human body, would you like to share something about yourself? Yeah, so uh, hi, my name is Teresiago, and yes, I'm 17. So I'm going to be graduating from senior high in two days. I'm from St. Paul College Pasig right now. Uh, been with them since grade 11, so pretty recent. But yeah, like as mentioned earlier, I've been homeschooled for most of my high school life, and I really, really enjoyed um, being homeschooled. Uh, yeah, and right now I'm an apprentice with Philippine Ballet Theater. Uh, aside from ballet, yeah, I, I really love medicine. Like before, like I always knew that I wanted to be a doctor. Like I always wanted to be a doctor since I was young, but I never, I was never really sure what kind of doctor I wanted to be. But um, now, recently, I've been pretty interested in psychiatry uh, because of my own experience as a mental health. So yeah, hopefully I can be a psychiatrist one day. Um, yeah, and aside from medicine and dance, I also like cooking, baking, I like watching anime right now, uh, listening to music and writing and reading. Okay, thank you. And may I know when, uh, what year have you started homeschooling, Therese? Uh, I started homeschooling since grade seven. Uh, I, I think that was in 2015. Okay. Yes, 2015. Uh, All right. So from grade seven up until grade 10. And at the time, like from grade seven to eight, I was with Homeschool Global, although at the time it was called the Masters Academy. And then from grade nine onwards, I switched to Walkersville Christian Family Schools because they have a U.S. curriculum. So I use their curriculum uh, since grade nine. Uh, it's funny actually because I will I never really planned before to go home to to be homeschooled at least not when I was in grade six it was actually because I had a friend like my best friend at the time she she was planning to be homeschooled right mm -hmm. after grade six and I was like oh I'll tell my mom about it so I did and then she was like oh okay and then we just like went on our way and then, um but it was when I realized that like during school, I wasn't really learning. I, guess, I wasn't really learning or I, I didn't learn at least as much as I, I could have. So we considered homeschool because of that. And then on top of that, like my ballet schedule was starting to uh, like conflict with my 
classes, my school classes. So then we're like, okay, let's try homeschool after grade six. And then we just went from there as is history. So you're able to pursue your ballet because of the flexibility that homeschool gave you, right? Yes, po. Okay. And due to the pandemic, we have seen an increase in families embracing homeschool. And we know that homeschooling is when parents take on the primary responsibility for their child's education. But from your point of view, what is your own definition of homeschool, Therese? Um, for me, homeschool, homeschool for me is education tailored to the child uh, rather than like in regular school your child has to fit the system. So for me, it's learning at your own pace, um, developing your own academic and outside interests. Uh, for example, like for me, I got to do more shows. I got to join a summer intensive and like even enter dance competitions because yes, I had a more flexible schedule. And yeah, so homeschool enabled me to develop my artistic pursuits, uh, but it also, allowed me to push myself harder academically because I remember like as I said before like I felt like I wasn't really learning anymore in regular school like I'd be frustrated because there were things that I wanted to learn already but my teacher would be like oh we'd have we will we will learn that later on yeah. so it's like oh I have to wait like <laughs> another school year like there was a time I was in grade six and then I asked like, oh, when are we going to learn about the lymphatic system? It's like the first day of school. <laughs> and my science teacher's like, oh, you have to wait until grade eight. So I was like, oh, we, I have to wait two more years. Okay. So, you know, it's like there is a bit of frustration there. But uh, when I was in homeschool, I got to do like honors chemistry and honors physics in grade nine so that by grade 10, I can focus solely on biology. So I, I, I had that control with like my subjects and when to take it, I didn't necessarily have to take it in grade eight, grade nine. I could take it if I wanted to like that. As long as, of course, I meet like the requirements like for the whole high, my whole high school mm -mm. year. But, you know, so that that's what homeschool is for me, like learning at your own pace. Um, I also, another thing is that like, I didn't have to take like, for example, home economics anymore because I already knew how to do sewing. Cause like with my ballet, like I have to sew my point shoes and my tights and stuff. And I like cooking. So I already knew how to cook. So I didn't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um, and yeah, because of my ballet, I didn't have to do PE, uh, music and arts. Cause that's like all combined already. Um, Homeschool for me is also about adaptability and experimentation and being resourceful because you have to find what's right for you or what's right for your child. And you have to find out the ways to make, give your child the best education possible. So how to find materials, where to get good tutors, etc. And I think another thing is homeschool is about independence, learning to be independent. Um, especially when it comes to handling your own academics and schedule. So my mom helped a lot with that because um, around grade nine, like grade seven and eight, she, she was the one helping me like fix my schedule and everything because of course like I was new and I was still like young at the time. Well, I'm still young, but you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, but then grade nine onwards, she's like, okay, you fix your own schedule for the mm -hmm. year. You figure out what subjects you're going to do. So yeah, I learned how to do scheduling like for, for my own subjects and um, like for the week, quarter. And aside from that, I also started learning how to teach myself, my teach myself the subjects. So like, I think by, yeah, by grade nine, I was doing most of the subjects by myself. Uh, the only time I study with my mom is like, if we need to do discussions or something. Uh, but yeah, so at least it's gonna help me with college. Like I already know how to study by yourself. So it's not gonna be as difficult. Um, and yeah, one of the other things though, is that even if you learn, even though homeschool will allow you to learn to be independent, I think it's also learning about how to foster relationships with others, whether it be your family, your friends. Um, yeah, because one of the biggest misconceptions with homeschool is that like kids lack socialization skills. Like that can be further from the, the S truth. word. Think, yeah. Yeah. I, you have, it's more about 
like playing your cards right like if you give your child the opportunities or if your child asks for the opportunities to you know build uh the community building to meet new people then you're not go- really going to have a problem like in fact i feel like homeschool actually provides better opportunities to do that because yeah as i said you can explore different communities you can meet different kinds of people different backgrounds ages um rather like i think like in school yes you can socialize you you learn socialization skills also like for you know obviously and you can have like your clubs to meet different kinds of people but it's all within the school rather than like just rather than hope so you can go out like there's a bigger reach so yeah and actually it's kind of funny because like i had i had no problems transitioning from homeschool to senior high like in terms of making friends and like my my classmates were kind of surprised <laughs> that i'd be i'd be the one like talking to them and stuff <laughs> so i don't think they if i hadn't told them that i was homeschooled before i don't think they would have known <laughs> and my brothers actually because they're both homeschooled now as well they have they regularly chat with their friends from bible group like they play games and stuff all the time like among us and stuff and yeah they and they have no problem talking to kids their the peers adults they're fine with anyone so yeah i think homeschool actually helps also with socialization if you can play your cards right I like what you said, playing your cards right, and the flexibility. You no, know, you you handle your own schedule. So I believe that's the reason why you do more shows, you uh, attend dance competitions, right? Yes, bro. Okay, and let's talk about prior to pandemic. What are aside from being a ballerina? You no, know, what are your uh, other school activities or non-school activities, if I may say? Yeah. So. Um, aside from ballet, like my competitions, my performances, the summer intensive, um, I also did volunteer work occasionally. Um, I, I I volunteered at this organization called Right Start, so it's a like an organization that um, helps like underprivileged kids. Uh, my brothers actually volunteer there as well. They teach like science and. Uh, do science experiments with them, or they'll like just play with them. Uh, for me, I was a ballet teacher for young girls. Wow! And wow. yeah, it's it's very fulfilling. I really like that. Um, yeah, because you know, I got first of all, I got to be creative. Like, I got to, I I would bring flower crowns and like make them pretend they're like fairies or princesses, so they'd like dance elegantly and stuff. Or like I'd make them pretend that they're bunnies so that you know they can like jump high and stuff uh yeah and i also really like um just spending time with the girls there cuz like they're all just genuinely so nice and they're so cute like they would be hugging my legs when they'd enter their classroom and it's it's just so it's so cute like i i'd melt <laughs> and yeah like just fostering relationships with kids and just giving giving back to a community contributing to a community and doing something like greater than yourself it's just it's very fulfilling and yeah so that's why um i really like doing i really like volunteering there um unfortunately because of the pandemic i hadn't been able to but and because i was busy also like trying to finish grade 12 but now since i'm i'm my schedule is freer so i'm hoping that somehow we can restart the classes with the kids the issue of course is like consistent internet connection so yeah. we're, we're still figuring out the details of that but yeah we're hoping that i can be able to do it again i really miss the the girls they're really nice um, i see that you really though, have a, a a big heart therese no you, you wanted to give back to the community no uh this is one way wherein you you gave back to the homeschool community and then you also teach to this young kids no wow ang galing thank you for yeah but uh now in the pandemic though um i recently started doing like gigs uh like dance gigs for money so like clients would like send in a track whether it's like their own track or like so- from somewhere else and then like I'll dance to it and I I really enjoy doing that because well first I learned how to choreograph 
Uh, so that's nice. And also how to make and edit videos. Like, um, yeah, I, I taught myself how to edit because of that. And that was really fun. And like, I get to be creative. Like I get to collaborate with them like on the costumes and things like that. Um, like wh wh which part of a track in case, you know, it needs to be cut. Uh, yeah, and also because since we can't perform anymore right now, this is this like gig thing is giving me some semblance of performing. Yeah. Because like, yeah, I'm not real. I'm not performing live, but like I'm I I'm performing as if I am. So that's nice, and it motivates me to keep my passion for dance alive, because it's really hard to stay motivated when you there's nothing to look forward to in the near future. <laughs> so no performances to to be excited about. So this is this is kind of my way of performing and improving also myself and pushing the limits of what I can do with my own body when I'm choreographing. So yeah, and I get to earn money because of it. So yeah. it's a nice bonus. That's a good bonus, right? Yes. <laughs> so I guess you also answer the S word, the socialization part since prior to pandemic, you volunteered. So parents, it doesn't mean that when you homeschool your children, they're just boxed in the four corners of your house. So there are a lot of activities that that your children can do so as what Therese have mentioned but uh, since you are a ballerina and you have school staff so how did you prioritize as your activities you have volunteer work so how do you do it yeah so at first uh, my mom was the one who helped me out a lot with the prioritizing but as I got older like I, I had to sort out between what's important uh, what what's urgent and then those that um, I can afford to like push back a bit, those not as important or urgent. Um, uh, I'd be guided a lot by important dates that can be moved. So let's say like a show or like a portfolio presentation or test or something. And then I'd plan, I'd plan my schedule accordingly. Uh, and then, yeah, so I did a lot of scheduling. Sometimes like I'll have like a backup schedule or like keep some days free like within the week or something so at least like if something takes longer than expected i have those free days that i can use so i have a backup schedule and then yeah i also like just pray to be sure that i'm prioritizing properly so of course like i'll make mistakes and there have been times and i screwed up <laughs> screwed up big time but yeah that's usually what i what i do to help me prioritize Okay, and since you mentioned you've been homeschooled from grade seven to grade 10, uh, so how did you manage your time? I mean, how did you balance with your homeschooling and your um, other activities? I, I made a lot of schedules, like a lot. So <laughs> um, yeah, when I was homeschooled, we'd have, I'd have a schedule for the year and then I'd have a schedule for the quarter and then I'd have a schedule for the week and then sometimes for the day. <laughs> so yeah, even up till now, like, well, now I don't need to make a schedule like for, for the year, for the quarter, because since I'm now with St. Paul, like the school kind of does that for me, but I still have like a daily schedule, a daily to-do uh, to -do list. But uh, well, before actually though, I I kind of beat myself up if I, I didn't get the task done because like I'm kind of a perfectionist and I was like and sometimes like I'd set unrealistic expectations of like in terms of time management so if if I didn't get anything something done I kind of bl blame myself for it but I've learned now to to just trust God and like if it's okay if I don't get everything done like not everything needs to be done because there's only 24 hours in a day and you know I can't do everything. So and as God um, in the Bible it says like there's a season, there's a time for everything, a season for everything. So um, I like to like remember that, be like it's okay if I don't do everything all at once. And yeah, yeah, I just I just trust God because I'm like I know I know God wants me to be able to you know finish high school or to finish a certain task. So I just need to trust that He'll he'll pull me through and that as long as I do my part you know study um, be disciplined as long as I have that and God 
I, I can pull through. It doesn't have, even if it doesn't go my way, it, it will work out eventually. So that's what I've learned. That's right. It's okay if some things are not done. We're just human. No? And we only have 24 hours in a day. However, one thing that I admired is that you mentioned um, scheduling is important. So you made, made a schedule for the year, for the quarter, for a day. So even if you are homeschooling, you have to make your own schedule or else. Sabog. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, there would be times actually when I would be too lazy to make a schedule and then everything just falls apart so yeah i've learned to to make uh like a, at least a, like a general schedule mm -hmm. and yeah although i do i do like planning a lot so i mean making schedules wasn't so much of a chore for me because i mean I, I really like planning out my my tasks and like my my time so yeah and then right. also prioritize um I had to learn like how, how to pull how to pull back um where to pull back when to pull back uh when to like focus on certain things like yeah I'm um, just finding that balance uh, with my time Okay and speaking of balance um can you share with us what preparations did you do to have a balanced homeschool life i mean it clearly shows that you are a holistic student no and not just purely academics so how did you balance your school and your passion um honestly i think it's because i was just doing things i already love like i love learning and i i love ballet so i think i already had it in me to to learn how to balance both because both are my passions so and then also with the volunteer work because i like helping help, helping out at right start so i mean it's it was kind of a given like if i want to keep these passions of mine of course i have to i have to put in the work and put and have that grit to to you know do to do them and balance them so i think there's that like if you don't have the intent it's going to be really hard to to be a holistic student like if you're if you already don't even like learning or like it's going to be hard to even focus on other things and be a holistic student if you you're already struggling to you know get by with academics because you don't like to learn so i think a lot of it also is having the intent and the the grit because once you have that you'll find a way so yeah and another thing is like my mom told me if an opportunity comes just say yes like even if you're not sure if you can like do it realistically just say yes because you can always say no after so always keep keep your foot in the door in several doors actually um yeah uh just, yeah, keep your options open and then if you realize oh you can't do it pala then then you can just say no. But if you say no already, it's like, yeah. well, how are you going to know that you like it? And then how That's are you right. going to know that you can do something outside of acad academics? You know, so um, yeah, I, I did that a lot. That's actually why I ended up applying to um, US universities because I never, I didn't really plan to. But mm -hmm. then I had an email from University of San Francisco saying that they had like an early decision, early action application. And it was free, so I was like, "Oh, I might as well." <laughs> so I <decided>. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, it's and it's a lot about just keeping options open, having the intent, and you will find a way to balance it yourself. And then, of course, along with other things like prioritizing time management. So yeah, that's that's my take. Okay, and I love what you said, no? You said, um, I love learning. That's music to the ears of the parents, no? I hope we can hear that to all our students, no? Uh, and I'm hearing some uh, teens saying, how to be you, po? <laughs> because how to love learning, no? I mean, other students or other teens would have this um, issues of not like or not loving learning, no? Parang nakakatamad. It's, it's, better if i watch netflix or just play games no but you have to have that intent as you mentioned and the grit because um other otherwise nothing will nothing good will will be offered to you right 
Yeah, because it's so much easier to balance things when, like, of course, it's going to be hard. Like, it was hard for me. I messed up. But because I, I, I love these things, it's like I was going to find the way. So I, I was going to find my own way. Um, yeah, and I think homeschool really allow creates an environment that will allow the child to love learning because they're not they don't have to fit into a system they don't have to fit into a learning style they can learn the way they best learn you know uh, my brother for example he's a kinesthetic learner so he and he he likes to move around <laughs> like well while my mom is like discussing he would he would move around before so it's funny because, of course, if you did that in school, people think he, he's not listening. Yes. But, you know, my mom allows it. And he's doing, he's thriving. Like, he's doing really well. Um, so, yeah. And also, again, like, you get, you have control over what you learn. Um, of course, like, there, there are requirements set by, like, the bed of, like, what subjects. But you, you get to, like, control how much you learn of a subject. If you want to go deeper into it. You can go for it. You know, you're not hold, held back. Yeah. Um, so that's that's why I think, like, if you're homeschooled, you, you'd have that opportunity to explore what you like, and that will help you to be a more holistic student. That's what you mentioned earlier. If you want to study more, let's say, the lymphatic system, then go on, read more. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's why. I really that's why I really really enjoyed homeschool because I, I mean I got I got to learn what I could what I wanted to learn <laughs> you know so all right so now let's talk about college so what were the things that you work out for college I mean did you prepare your portfolio ahead of time um actually because since grade well okay since before because I've always like tried to strive for high grades and because I already like ballet at an early age and I was um, like serious pretty early on. So everything was kind of set. Um, I just had to, you know, pray, um, trust in God con- and then just do put in my own uh, work, like continue to, to do well and study hard. So all I had to do was just like get the documents, like, you know, get my transcript and then my, but my grades are already there. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like set in place since, at least since grade seven. Um, so yeah, the, the thing I really had to prepare for was more of like the essays and stuff. So to do that, I, it, it was, it really depended on my school. Um, although for well for U.S. universities they have the common application, so it was actually easier to apply to the U.S. schools because of that. Like you didn't have to go to like the school website or something and then apply individually. Like you could just apply through that site, and like you just submit like your documents and everything, and then the, they have the common app essay. Oh, the schools have an individual essay um, as well, but you have th- there's also that common app essay. And you just put in that essay and then put in all the documents and then you just choose your schools and then bam, it's like you sent it already. And then all you need now are just like a, a couple docu- specific documents that the school might need. But yeah, so, um, but for like the individual college essays, um, a great way to, to find out what to write about is like, you look at the school like mission and vision, the values, and then you try to see how how you were able to incorporate it, like um, those values in your life, like how how you align with the vision and mission of the school, because the school is looking for like how how can you benefit society. So you have to figure out your own unique way. And for me, because of the years of of me, you know, doing ballet and doing the volunteer work and everything. So that, I just had to talk about that and just be genuine. Uh, so that was me. Uh, that, that, that was what I did for, for my college essays. So it's kind of easy for you because you've already been doing it for the past years, right? Yes, well, it's okay. real because, because the whole point of of like preparing for college is, to, is, is for the college admissions to like to know what you've done for the past years, like you're just showcasing them. It's like kind of one big portfolio presentation, essentially. Um, so it it's really just 
showing what you've already set in place. But what about exams? I mean, did you review for the exams, especially the the exams from the US uh, schools? Um, well, I was supposed to take the SATs in March, but then it got canceled, so I couldn't. And luckily, the US schools I applied for, like you didn't have to put in your SAT or ACT score. So I just didn't because like, wh what could I do? And then for the local college entrance exams, I did do a review, but then yeah, because of the pandemic, so we didn't have the college entrance exams anyway. So it really depended on the documents, my grades, since grades eight, seven, eight, um, instead of like just grade 11 or something. Um, yeah, and then doing the essays for, for some of the schools. It really depended on that. <laughs> but how did you go about choosing the schools for college? I mean, uh, prior to applying to them, have you thought that, oh, I wanted to go to this school? Or is it um, because of your mom's uh, or your parents' uh, decision? Uh, well, the because I applied in UP, Ateneo, UST, and Lasalle. So, I mean, that was like kind of a given because I know that uh, uh, they have really good med programs. And I, well, my first choice is UP. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I don't have the results for UP, so I don't know about that. But like um, Ateneo, yeah, I, I, Ateneo is my second choice because they, they do have a really good program. They have really good resources. And like I heard like the environment also in general is like really good as a med school um so that's that's why i chose those four for like the local universities and then for the u.s universities it was really more like a case i guess i guess because um the first university well the first university I applied to was university of san francisco and that was because i was like oh i'll just go for it because it's free. The admissions is free, so I was like, oh, I'll "Why not?" That. Right? So at least, yeah. And at least, like, you know, I'll have like a college. Like, even if it's probably like a long stretch. Like, I mean, at least I have something, you know. So that's why I applied there. Um, and I was like, I'll just figure out all the details later. And then for for Texas Christian University, that was because I got accepted to uh, the Dallas Conservatory. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll just apply there, I guess. Like, I'm not even sure if I can go, but like in case I can somehow, like I'll just apply. So I applied there. And also because like it was it was near um, the Dallas Conservatory and they're like one of the best schools in Texas. So I was like, okay, I'll just apply there. And they're they're pretty well known for like their med programs. Um for uh, my third one was Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, so MCPHS for short. Uh, that's because uh, my, I have relatives in Boston, and I was like, oh, I might as well just try it out in Boston, I guess. I applied to a couple more in Boston, actually. Um, I applied to Boston U, but a uh, university, but I didn't get in there. And I applied to University of Massachusetts, Boston, but then because I need like a language proficiency test and they'd have to pay, I was like, never mind. <laughs> so I didn't. Actually, I was supposed to do a language proficiency test for MCPHS as well. And for for some of the universities, actually for most universities, they need that if you're an international student. But then I was able to like ask, I asked them, I was like, oh, do I do I can I like not <laughs> do it? Because I because English is my first language and anyway you have the essay so you can like check there if like, yes. English. and also like you can see my grades for English. And I'll, and they and most of them are like, yeah, okay, you can just skip it. But then and then for MCPHS, they were like, oh you really have to take the test. And then I saw like the, all the test options you can take, but then you'd have to pay. And I was like, never mind. So I was like, okay, I'll just forgo the up application. So I thought that I would be disqualified. From MCPHS, but then surprisingly, I got in with the scholarship. So I was like, "Oh, okay, so you didn't really need the test." Then. <laughs> so that was funny. See, so you um, just have to ask. Yeah, I just asked them. Honestly, like, um, for US universities, a lot of the times you can just like ask to, to if like for like I didn't have to pay the application fee for all of my all of the university US universities I applied to. 
because they have an option in the common app where you can say like, oh, um, I'm like, you get to forgo the application fee uh, as long as you like, there are different options. When the one I chose was because like, I could provide uh, like a statement from my guidance counselor or something saying why we need financial aid for the application fee. So I didn't have to pay, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> Siyempre, doon na tayo sa makakatipid. Right, Ma'am Shees? <laughs> okay. And <Just> some... <laughs> That's right. You just have to ask. But some students would have a hard time, especially in the final year of high school. So what, uh, what kept you motivated? I mean, what tips can you share to your fellow teens to inspire them to just move on and keep on and finish high school? I will be honest. <laughs> I wasn't as motivated anymore for for senior year of high school. Like, I mean, obviously, I cared about my grades. I wanted to finish. I did. I did the best I could. But like, honestly, especially with the pandemic, where like everything's like so monotonous already. Like, I was not that motivated anymore. Like, on I just prayed a lot and just trusted that like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna finish and I'm gonna finish strong because like I'll put in the work and. God will just help me through the rest. So that's literally what I just did. I just prayed. And I all because honestly, I don't know how I I stayed how, how I was able to finish uh senior high and how I was able to still like keep up my grades because I was just not motivated anymore. Um yeah, so it's just it's really the power of God. Like don't ask me how I just <laughs> because I really just prayed. And I just, I had support from, you know, my family, my friends, like, oh, you know, we're all dying, but at least we're, we're all dying together. So, you know, there's comfort in that. And that kind of, in a way, like pushed me because it's like, oh, I'm not suffering alone, you know? So yeah, it was really just God and my friends and my family. That's how I survived. Okay. But I think pray, praying alone is not enough, no? Even though you're saying you're not motivated, but you keep you kept on the, you, you said you wanted to finish strong you you put in the work so i guess if you just put in the work and then pray to god then everything will fall into place for you yes and yes, of course you had support from your families yes because like it's impossible to stay motivated all the time you know we're human yeah there's no way i could have like especially with all the things that i'm doing like there's no way i'm going to stay motivated like all throughout my high school life or like school life in, or just life in general so yeah, uh, I just really like, okay, God, you take the wheel because I'm I'm so done. <laughs> it was really me. All right. So for the scholarships, was it uh, was it hard uh, when you applied for those scholarships here and abroad as well? Um. Well, because the scholarships that I was aiming for were merit scholarships, so they automat once your once you submit your application, the college admissions board will already like consider if you're a candidate for the merit scholarship so mm -hmm. I didn't really have to do anything I just waited and then they announced that I had gotten the scholarship so I was like oh okay that's cool <laughs> so, yeah. uh, okay so my last question is um, since you've been homeschooling from grade 7 until grade 10 what are you grateful for having experienced homeschooling in high school threes I have a lot. I don't know where to start. Um, but I think for me, it was really like learning, learning more about myself and how to develop my own passions, how to how to self motivate. And when during the times that I couldn't, I I trust God. So it was a lot. I, I, homeschool for me. I'm grateful for the opportunities to to grow not just like academically or even in ballet, like in character, um, just learning how, how to be independent, as I've said earlier, how to foster relationships um, and just developing those, those passions within myself and having and exploring like a wide range of, of interests, of options. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And I'm grateful for, for all the experiences that I, I've, I, I keep in my heart now because of that, like all the, all the friends I've made, 
um, all the new things I got to try. Uh, like, for example, I got to um, go to the US for a summer intensive uh, for dance. And I met so many new people there, like people from Japan, New Zealand, Britain, France, like, oh, all these people and like all the all the teachers and just learning from all of them, like the different the different styles of dance, it, like even within ballet, there's different styles. So just learning all of that, it was really fun. Um, yeah, I, I really like, and I, it, I liked how homeschool kind of opened me up to, to more options and that made me like, it, it gave me a better sense of where, where I am um, in the world and where, where I am like academically in terms of ballet because I, I now know the standards like abroad and because I do want to eventually study abroad in the future at least I know like where I am and how how I should get there because I feel like if I was in regular school for from most of my high school then I wouldn't really know because I I'm kind of just like within it's just within the school and or maybe like even within the country but it's like you it's going to be hard. It would be, have been harder for me to explore mm -hmm. and see where I am internationally. So I think that's, that's what I'm grateful for with homeschool. All right. Wow. I know that your parents are really proud of you, no? Because parents not only aim for good or academic grades, no? But most importantly, we aim for that our children will, will grow in character, will grow their relationship with God. And I see that with you. So hats off to your parents, Therese. Yes, thank you. Bo. Yeah, my par my parents, like especially my mom, she she really did a lot for me because she was the one who was like, oh, you know, there's like a competition. You're like, oh, like do you want to try it out? And I was like, oh, thank you, thank you for letting me know. Like you know, it's it's nice that my mom really supports me and she really like helped me open up, you know, and see the all these different opportunities. So I'm really grateful to my mom. She really helped us out. And she's doing that with my brothers as well. So like kudos to her. She's the one homeschooling all three of us. <laughs> so. so she's not only your mom. She's also your teacher, your researcher, yes. your everything. She's the principal. <laughs> That's right. Well, Therese, thank you for sharing your story with us. We have been blessed. Grabe, no? Napuno ang puso ko. We wish you well on your co college journey. And uh, parents, if you want to know more story of homeschooling teens like uh, Therese, you can check the book, Welcome to My Humble Homeschool, Secrets of Successful Homeschooling Teens. So this book will help teens how to navigate homeschool in high school. And it provides practical information to the parents as well uh, on how to have a successful homeschool experience. And I'm very proud of this book, not only because uh, this is the first book ever written by homeschooling teens about homeschool, but because the teen authors really poured out their heart and share their own amazing stories about homeschool. I know, Therese, it's hard to share your own experiences, but you are brave enough to let us know how, how you did it, and we congratulate you. And uh, parents, let me end my uh, our sharing today by a quote by Mary Kay Clark. And she said, homeschooled children benefit the community because they are not shaped by peers, but by parents. So see you on the next episode, Maka Homeschool. Thank you, Therese. God bless everyone.